Hello and welcome to Prague, Czech Republic. Today I'm gonna teach you five interesting, or I'd say fun facts, that you can impress your friends, your travel mates, when you come to our beautiful city. Let's start. We are on the Charles Bridge, and this is the first time I'm gonna teach you a date. An exact date, an exact moment when they started building this bridge. And it's very easy to remember. It's 1357, 9th of July, five o'clock, 31 minutes in the morning. Now, how do I remember that? And how will you remember that? Well, it's easy. It's all the odd numbers going up and down. One, three, five, seven, nine, seven, five, three, one. Easy to remember and easy to impress your friends. But there's a catch to it. It's not really true. I mean, don't get me wrong. The year is correct. And you can even see it on the bridge written in Roman numerals. But the exact day and the exact time, not really. Actually, somebody came up with this theory in the 20th century in the late 70s. And the historians are saying that they were simply unable to pinpoint that exact moment of that day. So, sorry. But hey, it's a cool story and now you know the backstory to it too. So you can impress your friends. You want to impress them even more? Let's go! We are in front of Mostecka Street number 20. That's what we would write in a letter if we would want to get it delivered here. But back in the days, 400 years ago, we would simply write, deliver to the house by the three golden rings. I believe this fun fact may interest your kids especially because they can look for these house signs and there's many of them around the city center. And really, they were used to orient around the city. So you would say, we're going to the Golden Tiger, we're going to the Golden Plum, uh, the house by the snake, and so on. Obviously, they're not used to orient anymore, but many restaurants are still called by the name, by the sign that is still on the house. But then a sort of a law in Europe stepped in and said, you have to have a house with a number. Uh, so since 1770, all the houses in Prague have numbers and you can find them by that. So when you go with your friends or kids, try to pinpoint every house sign there is. For the house signs, you gotta look up. But for this fun fact, you gotta look down on the Prague sidewalk, or as we call it, the Prague mosaic. Every sidewalk looks a different. And believe it or not, there are certain rules and conditions how it can look. Let me teach you just some basics. This type is called the 70. And I believe, from what I found, is that it's because this is 70 centimeters. But there's more cool ones. We just crossed the street and suddenly there's a different mosaic. You can recognize the 70, but there's a square in the middle. So this one's called a 70 with a square. And as I said, there are rules to what it should look like. So in this case, the square in the middle has to be wider than the surroundings. So it should be one, two, three, four, five tiles. And this is one, two, three, four. This is correct. But wait. And now an interesting fact in an interesting fact, because we already said this is the 70 with a square, but according to the city manual, the middle square should be five by five stones. And trust me, it's hard to find correct one. Usually it's wrong like this and it's four by four, which is against the city's manual how to make the sidewalk. Kind of interesting. Another common mistake that you can find on the sidewalks is when there's a sewer, the tiles should simply ignore it and not go around it like this. So this is not according to the manual, but we did find correct uh, cases of this. Quite often when the sidewalk is narrow, the type of mosaic used is this, and that's the chessboard type because it uh, looks like a chessboard. But we picked this sidewalk for a specific reason, because not only the chessboard, but also something called Stolperstein. And that's a stone, golden stone with a name on it that reminds us of victims of Holocaust during the Second World War, people that lived in this house but were deported to concentration camps. We will make a special episode only about this uh, because I believe it deserves it. So if you don't want to miss that, you can subscribe to our channel. 
And the last type of the Prague mosaic I'm gonna show you is this one, and it's called the Dragons. Square in the middle and squares on the corner. The information I got was from a manual that was issued by the city, and it has more than 160 pages. You can look at it, there's a lot of pictures, and you can play a game with your friends what types, what other types you can find on the Prague sidewalks, because there are many we did not mention. I think this can be a fun game. Before we continue on with our show, we have more fun facts to show you. We would like to say thank you to our long-term partner, and it is Surfshark VPN. Uh, I'm sure you know by now what a VPN does for you, but if you don't, it's a service that helps you locate your computer, your cell phone, or your iPad or tablet to any location that you pick from. Uh, it's very helpful, especially when you want to access content that would otherwise be restricted in your country. But not only that, some countries block entire sites. There are countries that block uh, entire social media. So in that case, Surfshark VPN can be helpful because you simply log into any country you choose. If you want to try it out, you can do so by using the link below the video or using a code HONESTGUIDE. For that, you'll get four months for free and 83% off. We both use it, especially when we travel and want to access content that otherwise would be restricted. So once again, thank you Surfshark VPN for partnering with us. And let's move on with some other interesting facts about Prague. The colors of the Prague metro stations actually have some logic and some thoughts put into it, and it will blow your and your friend's mind away. Right now, we're on one of the biggest intersections in Prague, where the square and a big street meets, and the nickname for it is the Golden Cross. So the station below us of the Prague Metro has a golden interior. Now, if we would have moved one station further, it will be all red. Why red? Because it's supposed to resemble the color of blood, because 400 years ago, there was a big execution that happened on the square where the station is. That's why it's red inside. And if we would have taken the metro two stops that way, we would come to a blue station called Namieski Miru, the Peace Square, because the blue color is supposed to resemble peace. Also, fun fact, it's the deepest metro station in Prague. So when you take the Prague metro, the A-line, you can easily impress your friends. Your name and your friend's name is on the astronomical clock. Most likely. Let me explain. There's this calendar dial, and on it are 365 names, actually a little bit more, because every day in our calendar is associated with a name. So we have something called a name day that you can celebrate. So for example, me and Honza are actually called Jan, J-A-N, and our name day is on the 24th of June. So we can look up on the calendar dial, find the 24th of June, and find our name. So here's what you do. Google when is your name day in the Czech calendar, then look up the day, the month, on this calendar dial, and your name should be there. To help you look for your name, here's a tip. Today is the end of October, so the little golden line shows us today's date. So we know that our name day is on the 24th of June, so we're gonna go October, September, August, July, June, look for 24, and there's Jan. And this is how you can impress your friends. Hopefully their name will be on the calendar dial. So those were five little interesting facts to impress your travel mates when you come to Prague. Do you want more? Well, you can have more. We actually have another show called A Mini Guide where we show such things and it is on our Patreon, patreon.com slash honest guide, so you can check that out. Let us know in the comment section below if any of these interest you, so maybe we can dig in more, or if you yourself have some interesting fact that we didn't mention while you were in Prague and you noticed it. Uh, I'll see you next week on another episode of the Honest Guy Show. Ahoy! Yes, of course, I'm gonna teach you a Czech word at the end, and this time it's the word ohoromit which means to impress someone. If you want to impress a person, you want to ohromit. Ohromit někoho, impress someone. And let me impress you with something. My friend wanted to impress me, so he actually gave me shoes as a gift that have honest guide on them. And I absolutely love them. <laughs>